Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Christy and I am going on my fifth year of homeschooling my five kids. And today I'm going to be talking all about everything homeschool mom self-care, so stay tuned. Yeah, you're taking me high. Thank you guys for joining me once again on my channel. If you are new here, I invite you to stick around and subscribe to my channel. On this channel, I talk about all things homeschooling, motherhood, everything in between. I take you along on our homeschooling journey. I have been documenting all the way from the beginning up until now. I hope that you leave my channel always feeling encouraged and loved. Today, I'm gonna to be talking about something that can be a little bit taboo when it comes to motherhood in general, but also homeschooling moms. I think so many times we are so defensive of our choice to homeschool and to be home with our children that the pendulum can swing into the area of martyrdom and giving, 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 giving until we have absolutely nothing left and we're left feeling empty and run down and totally burnt out. I think sometimes we think that the only way that we can practice self-care is like maybe 10 minutes at the grocery store or a shower by ourselves. These are going to be things that really fill your soul and that edify you in a lasting way to sustain you through the homeschooling year. Now my list is going to be completely different from yours or somebody else's and that is totally okay. I'm just going to be sharing what personally fills my bucket and what helps me to practice self-care and these are things that I've had to learn along the way. Number one, and this is probably the hardest discipline that I've had to learn to stick with, is moving my body every day. Day. Um, no excuses. No excuses. I can't say, oh, I didn't get very much sleep last night, so I can't meet my 10,000 steps for the day. To me, I have to set those hard guidelines or else I will absolutely take advantage of any slack I give myself. So every single day, I have been making it a point to get out there and take a walk with my husband after he gets home from work, um, to get up and do a workout. I've been doing a beach body workout with my neighbor friend who's been coming over every morning and we do a quick 30 minute workout in my garage and it helps to kind of have this friend that pours into me, but I know not everybody has a friend who lives right next door and could just run across the yard. As I'm getting older and I can feel my body aging, it is so important for me to feel good. That way I can be there for my kids, for my husband, and feel good about the activity I am doing throughout the day. Of course, I always hit that two o'clock, three o'clock lag. Speaking of which, it is literally five o'clock p.m. right now. I'm drinking a Celsius. I might regret this later, but YOLO. Do kids even say that anymore? I don't know. Typical millennial right here. I have got to move my body. I will feel good, and I promise you, if you set small goals for yourself, you will feel good as well. Number two is not slacking on my nutrition. And this is another tough one for me because I oftentimes reach for convenience foods. I finally got an air fryer. I joined the 21st century, got an air fryer, and whoa, is it a game changer. I can put a salmon burger in there, give me some greens on the side for a quick lunch, and it's so hands off that I'm able to cook myself something that is healthy and will feed my body and make me feel good, but also free up my hands for other things so I can multitask. But by carefully planning out my week's meals, including lunches, it has been a huge, huge game changer for me. I would meal plan my dinners and I didn't ever really think of meal planning my lunches. But ever since I've started meal planning my lunches and sometimes breakfast as well, I'm not a huge breakfast eater. Having things in the house that are staples, rotating the same things out ever so often so I don't get burnt out on things has been huge for me. Number three, and this I know is going to depend on schedules and work schedules can be so hard, especially if you're a stay-at-home mom and you have a husband who's working super hard to provide for his family. My husband has thankfully been getting home at a decent time every night and that's not always the case this time of year. Last year at this time, he was rolling in around seven o'clock, exhausted, working Saturdays. This year he has weekends off which has been a huge blessing to us. Um, 
but giving my husband undivided attention one to two hours a night feeds my soul as well as his and it feeds our marriage in such a healthy way and just being able to focus on him and just let the bygones of the day go he can talk about his day i can talk about my day but we also make time for fun together number four and this is so hard for us mamas i know because I think there's a lot of guilt that comes along with this one and that is developing and pouring into really good friendships and taking time for those friendships taking time to pour into those women in our lives who build us up and who edify us why do we have so much guilt around this i think that sometimes we feel like we're ditching our family to go hang out with a good friend but that is so needed and I have realized it was something that was missing from my life at the very beginning of motherhood. And I had a really good mom friend come into my life about five years into motherhood and it was so huge for me. I was like, wow, this is making me actually enjoy motherhood even more because I had somebody that I could bounce off of ideas or talk things through with who really, really got it. It is so important for us to have those women in our lives to not only be necessarily a sounding board or somebody to talk to in those moments of desperation but also to have fun with also to be able to laugh with and also to be able to build those sisterhood bonds with one another uh it's just it's amazing and incredible to see how your families intertwine and it's just been a huge blessing to my family as a whole my journey in motherhood to have friendships and i'm not even talking about having a million friends if one or two good solid friends can make all the difference in this journey and as a homeschooling mama especially you're with your little people all day every day it's okay to want to get away for a few hours even if it's once or twice a month to just have dinner with a friend have coffee with a friend to make time carve out time for those friendships is so healthy and so important. Number five, something that I have been practicing this summer is taking time off of school. Like really taking time off of school, not thinking about curriculum, not trying to plan out the next year, not doing this, doing that, questioning if I'm doing it up. <laughs> really, really taking that mental break off of school has been huge. I've been absolutely enjoying this summer. I've been soaking up this time with my kids. I've been soaking up this time with my husband without that kind of looming in the background. I can feel pressure very, very easily and then that leads to burnout before we even start our new school year. So this year, I am not trying to procrastinate. I have ordered a majority of our curriculum already. I'm just not dwelling on it. I still have to go through my homeschooling area and you know what? I think I'll probably do that maybe a week or two before we actually start the year this year because I'm not gonna dwell on it. I'm gonna soak up the summer because this is just as much a break for me as it is for my kids. Number six, and this is something I think applies across the board, whether you're a homeschooling mom or just a stay-at-home mom or just a working mom in general, is preventative care like really making those appointments for taking care of our bodies, whether that's your mammogram, whether that's your yearly female checkup, uh, skin checks. And I think that we make appointments for everybody else in our lives, kids, husbands, sometimes we have to push our husbands into the doctor. <laughs> I don't know about your husbands, but I literally have to basically like forced my husband into the doctor to do his like yearly checkups and now he's pretty good about it but at first it was like honey I will make you the appointment you just go when I tell you to go because <laughs> he would not make the appointment on his own but anyway I digress we make appointments for everybody else in our lives we're constantly making sure that everybody else is taken care of what about you what about your body you need to stay strong too you are just as important as everybody else in your life so Make those appointments you've been putting off. It's okay. Your kids will be okay. Everybody will be okay without mama for a day while you go run, do all these appointments. Make those appointments because you do not want to be sorry for missing an appointment. I'm going to say this really, really quick. My mom had breast cancer. She was diagnosed with breast cancer about eight years ago. Thankfully, she's cancer free now. She made it through, praise God. Um, but she got a yearly mammogram because my grandma also had breast cancer. 
she got a mammogram and it was clear she was due for her next mammogram but put it off a couple of months because she couldn't make her appointment in that literal 14 month span she had aggressive cancer growing and so that's all it takes for between one scan and another so if there is an appointment that you've been putting off especially if you have a medical history do it do it do it do it it's so important those yearly checks are so important for us women um no matter what doctor you're seeing if it's a functional medicine doctor or your gynecologist or whomever make that appointment mama all right number seven something i practice as self-care and this one might make some people roll their eyes but we are going to have those chores no matter what we're going to have the dishes to be done we're going to have the cleaning to be done toilets to be cleaned yards to be mowed i am the yard mower in my house i enjoy mowing my yard it's very relaxing to me because I have learned how to start focusing my perspective a little bit when it comes to these dailies that I have. During the school day, I make sure that I am pretty much hands off when it comes to daily cleaning chores slash tasks that I have around the house. I will pick up a little bit here and there and I will do like a load of dishes maybe in between lessons, but that's about it. Laundry, things like that, I'll maybe put a load in, but as far as like taking it out, folding it, putting it away, things that I need to focus attention on. I am 100% focused on school during our school time. So I have a block of time, about nine o'clock to two o'clock that I have carved out roughly, um, where no housework is done. Now, after school is wrapped up, that's kind of when I will do the things that I need to do around the house. And sometimes I am left feeling so tired at the end of the school day, I don't feel like doing it. But I have learned to make chores fun. I mean, what else am I gonna do? I'm gonna have to do it anyway. So I'll put my little earbuds in and I'll listen to a podcast I really enjoy or maybe it's an audiobook that I've been really looking forward to listening to while I'm folding laundry I put on like my shows that only I like watching that nobody else wa likes watching with me um and it makes it more enjoyable and I like carving out that chore time as also some me time has really helped shift my perspective too into uh, gratitude when it comes to doing chores around the house. Like when I am doing the dishes, I think to myself, thank God that we have clean dishes to eat off of. And I feel so good having done this load of dishes that have been in my sink all day. If I am cleaning uh, bathrooms or something like that, I kind of just stand back and look at it and I'm just like, it looks good. This looks so nice. It smells so clean in here. I know everything's sanitized. Thank God for that. You know, just having this perspective of gratitude because let's face it, like we're home with our kids 24 seven. It's so easy to feel burnt out. It's so easy to start feeling resentful because we do carry a lot of load doing what we do. Let's not downplay what we do ladies we are getting it done every day and it's okay to say that it's okay to say it. it doesn't mean that you're not humble it doesn't mean that you are gloating we get it done every single day we're doing school day with the kids we're cooking meals we're providing um a clean house for our families we're making sure everybody has clean clothes on their back like we are doing it we're running kids here and there we are doing it. Find that thing that might make doing chores around the house a little bit more enjoyable and it might actually count as self-care. Cleaning toilets, counting as self-care. Never, never would have thunk. So mamas, martyrdom is not the answer to motherhood. I think, like I said at the beginning of my video, we are so proud of the fact that we get to stay at home with our kids and we get to homeschool them. And I think that we do spend a lot of time defending that choice and that there is a culture out there that is like the mommy wine culture that is kind of like the opposite end of that spectrum but that doesn't mean that we need to swing the pendulum all the way to martyrdom and say like oh i have to just keep going 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 providing 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 this 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 giving 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 until we are completely depleted nobody can do that everybody is going to burn out at some point and it's so important to take that time to practice that self-care so that we aren't left feeling resentful and 
sometimes it messes with your head like it will straight up the devil will come in and lie to you and say you can't do this you're not worthy of this you're failing look at you're not even enjoying this like why are you doing this now, everybody's level of self-care is different and i think that it's important to remind ourselves of that that our our needs aren't going to look like sue's across the street they're not going to look like so and so on the internet they're not going to look like this that homemaking instagram aesthetic like we need to also remember that there's a certain aesthetic that we're seeing on social media that promotes motherhood which is beautiful and that's amazing and i love seeing that but at the same time we have to remind ourselves that this isn't our only identity our identity is in christ and we are a whole person aside from motherhood motherhood is one aspect of our identity but it isn't the entire thing we are still people who enjoy things who need to be poured into who need to practice self-care and when we get in the word when we get alone with god it helps to fill our cup and there is a freedom and there is a resting in that we aren't bad moms because we took a half hour to work out in the morning instead of folding that load of laundry we aren't bad moms for taking a night having the husband watch the kids having our husband watch the kids while we take a few hours for a friend it's only going to benefit everybody in the house when we are making sure that our needs are met as well as everybody else's because mama you're important like i i if somebody hasn't told you that recently i want to tell you you are important and i'm gonna get teary because i feel this so strongly in my soul that i think that as moms like we lose ourselves in this motherhood sometimes and especially when you're a homeschooling mom it's an added level of responsibility and it is a such a beautiful calling but with it comes so much sacrifice so it's important to find these things that are the most important to you that bring you joy that edify you and edify your family so i hope that you guys enjoyed listening to my self-care practices that i have implemented and these are things like i said before that i've had to learn the hard way like there are some seasons in my life where i have completely burnt myself out and not because of anybody what anybody else was doing it was because of me it was because i felt like i had to be a martyr in my homes i felt like i just had to keep going like a machine without ceasing and that is just not how we are designed to be that's not what god expects of us and that's not what our kids need from us we don't have to be robots who are just attending everybody's needs like i think of that robot from the jeffersons <laughs> just like Wah! with like a little maid's apron okay i that's weird you're a whole person so i hope that you guys enjoyed this video if you are new here i invite you to click that subscribe button i hope that you'll stick around i'll have so many more homeschooling videos coming up i will have curriculum coming up soon i am waiting on a few things to come in the mail and i'm so excited to share with you guys my curriculum picks for this year i will have that up soon i promise you i promise you i know you guys look forward to that every year so thank you guys once again for sticking around and i will talk to you guys soon take care you look so beautiful and i'm so lucky to be yours and you're taking me